What is up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast. I am your host, Wadislav, and today we're going to be talking about two new charges that have been introduced against Ghislaine Maxwell in the Southern District of New York by the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, down there, Audrey Strauss. So we're going to be looking at some of the changes that have been made to the case. So this is a superseding indictment that has been filed on top of the original indictment, which was filed, I believe, in July of last year. So we're going to be going over the changes that have been made by the government to the original indictment, okay? So um, I've, I've highlighted the significant parts of these documents. There's two uh, documents that we're going to look at. We're going to look at the indictment itself, uh, and I'm going to detail for you guys what they've added in um, today. Uh, these were filed today, and um, and we're going to go through some of the statements made by the government lawyer. So let's let's take a look at this first. So one of the significant changes that have been made from the first indictment to the second is the uh, the length of the crimes that have been committed has been extended. So as you can you can see here, count one or the first indictment alleged that this conduct uh, with Gillian Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein continued through 1997. But in the second indictment, the one that's filed today, the conspiracy continued through 2004. So they're expanding the length of time that uh, that Gillian Maxwell and um, her friends, her associates committed these crimes. Okay, so that's one of the uh, significant changes that have been made and also uh, specifically identifies a fourth victim, minor victim four. So originally it was minor victim one, two, and three, which I covered in my last Annie Farmer video, uh, who was a victim of this conspiracy between approximately 2001 and 2004. So they're introducing a new victim, a fourth victim, and they're expanding the time period from 1997 to 2004. That, those are the two significant things that are happening here. So furthermore, more. Um, the uh, second indictment adds a new charge against the defendant. In particular, count five alleges that the defendant participated in a sex trafficking conspiracy between approximately 2001 and 2004 in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 371. The uh, second indictment specifically identifies minor victim number four as a victim of the conspiracy. Count six of the second indictment adds another new charge against the defendant. In particular, count six alleges that that the defendant participated in the sex trafficking of a minor and aided and abetted the same in violation of 18 U.S. Code Section 1591 and 2. The uh, second indictment specifically identifies minor victim number four as the victim in this count. All right, guys, so let's take a look at the indictment and exactly what's happened here. So as you may remember, I've covered in my past videos, there were six counts against her before, basically four having to do with sex trafficking uh, and then two others having to do with perjury. Now they've added in uh, count five and count six that have to do with uh, sex trafficking conspiracy and sex trafficking of a minor. And then the perjury charges have been moved down. So there's eight counts in total now, two perjury charges just as before, but two new charges uh, relating to sex trafficking have been made. So there's six different charges uh, relating to uh, sex trafficking and similar crimes. And uh, as before, there are two perjury charges. Okay, so let's go over the two new charges that have been added. Okay, so from at least in or about 2001 to 2004 in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant and Jeffrey Epstein and other people known and unknown, uh, willfully and knowingly did combine, conspire, confederate and agree together and with each other to commit an offense against the United States to wit sex trafficking of minors in violation of Title 18. United States Code Section 1591A and B. In the next section, they go on to further expand on that and talk about how um, they engage in activities uh, to incite and recruit minors, people who are below the age of 18, and uh, into doing commercial sex acts in violation of Title 18. So in the next section, they described overt acts committed by Jeffrey Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell. Between 2001 and 2004, uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein recruited minor victim number four to engage in sex acts with Epstein at the Palm Beach residence, after which Epstein and at times Maxwell provided minor victim four with hundreds of dollars in cash for every encounter. Minor victim number four truthfully told both Epstein and Maxwell her age. Between in or about 2001 and uh, in or about 2004, Epstein and Maxwell both encouraged and enticed minor victim number four to recruit other girls to engage in paid sex acts with Epstein, which she did. 
Between 2001 and 2004, Epstein's employees, including at times Maxwell, sent minor victim number four gifts, including lingerie, from an address in the Southern District of New York to minor victim number four's residence in Florida. For example, on one occasion, in or about October of 2002, Epstein caused a package to be sent by Federal Express from an address in Manhattan to minor victim number four in Florida. So that's a very specific example there, and I'm sure they're able to produce that package or at at least the uh, packaging label. On multiple occasions between in or about 2001 and 2004, Epstein, Maxwell, or one of Epstein's other employees called Minor Victim 4 to schedule an appointment for Minor Victim 4 to massage Epstein. For example, in or about April of 2004 and May of 2004, another employee of Epstein's called Minor Victim Number 4 to schedule such appointments. So they have very specific examples um, of the of the victim who's come forward here of instances where these actions took place. And if they can prove them in court, that's uh, strong evidence. Okay, so let's move on to count six, sex trafficking of a minor. So uh, the language here is basically similar, but I'm going to read you guys. Um, just for the record, I'm going to read you guys this, okay? From at least... In or about 2001 to 2004, in the Southern District of New York and elsewhere, Ghislaine Maxwell, the defendant, willfully and knowingly, in and affecting interstate and foreign commerce, did recruit, entice, harbor, transport, provide, and obtain by any means a person, knowing that the person had not attained the age of 18 years and would be caused to engage in a commercial sex act, and did aid and abet the same, to wit, Maxwell recruited, enticed, harbored, transported, provided, and obtained individuals who were less than 18 years old, including but not limited to minor victim 4 as described above, and who were then caused to engage in at least one commercial sex act with Jeffrey Epstein and aided and abetted the same. Once again, violating Title 18, United States Code, Section 1591A, B2, and 2. Okay, so um, the rest of it is the normal stuff. This is stuff from the first um, uh, grand jury indictment having to do with perjury. I've already covered these charges in uh, past videos. So those are the uh, new facts that have been added into the record. Basically, like I said, uh, extending the period of the crimes, which was uh, in the first indictment from 1994 to 1997. Now they have been expanded uh, to another period, 2001 to 2004. So the second indictment basically added a new period of time uh, where the crimes were committed by Ghislaine Maxwell. And it also added a new victim who has come forward um, that the government is going to present at trial. OK, so those are the two new additions to the case. So in the last section, I want to talk about how the discovery process is going to be impacted by this, uh, which is that there's not going to be that much of an, uh, of an impact because um, the uh, the evidence related to this stuff has already been given over to the defense. So as you guys know, the discovery process basically uh, finished a couple months ago. Um, all of the uh, evidence and uh, witnesses and everything that's going to be produced at trial um, has been handed over to the defense by the government as uh, required uh, by the uh, uh, federal rules of criminal procedure. But nevertheless, I want to cover this because they are introducing new evidence. So I want to let you guys know where the discovery process um, stands at this point. Okay, so let's cover this. Um, the government has already produced to the defense all material that constitutes Rule 16 discovery related to the new allegations and charges contained in the second indictment. In particular, the government has, from the outset, approached its Rule 16 productions, in this case, as though allegations covered a broader time period through at least 2005, rather than limiting those productions to the time period alleged in the first indictment, uh, which uh, enumerated 1994 to 1997. As a result, the government has already produced to the defense all Rule 16 material relevant to the second indictment, of which it is aware in the uh, prosecution team's possession. These Rule 16 materials included pr uh, productions from the fields of the Florida FBI, the FBI New York office, and the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. Finally, given the expanded charges in the second indictment, the government is prepared to produce Jenks Act and Giglio material for witnesses it expects to call a trial six weeks rather than four weeks uh, in advance of trial. These productions, together with the guidance provided to defense today regarding discovery relating to minor victim four, should provide ample time for the defense to prepare for trial and proceed as scheduled on July 12th, 2021. So I want to read you guys that part because um, as you may be familiar by now, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, when, when one side produces new information uh, or evidence, the other side has to be given ample time to review that. Uh, that's 
why they talked about the Jenks Act and Giglio. I've in my previous videos, I've uh, covered what a Jenks Act and Giglio um, obligations are. They have to do with uh, you know the uh, the prosecution letting um, the uh, the defense know all the relevant facts uh, as to the witnesses and any exculpatory evidence that they might be um, and they might be holding, so that so that uh, the defense is able to adequately defend themselves and defend their clients and the uh, and the uh, the trial can be fair. Okay, so that's why I wanted to cover this part. Um, the government has already met their discovery obligations. They have given the defense ample time to prepare their defense for this new person that's being introduced and the new time period that's also being introduced. So last thoughts here. I think that Ghislaine Maxwell's side is going to try to use this new evidence that's been presented as an excuse to try to delay the trial. Um, hopefully, Judge Allison doesn't fall for that, uh, but we'll have to see how that goes forward. And I will, of course, be covering the next update that happens here. All right. So with that being said, that is it for this video. As always, if you want to support the show, you can do so on Patreon and also by joining channel memberships down below by clicking the blue join button. And if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for watching all the way. Uh, make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell and press all so you get notifications for all my videos. With that being said, I'll see you guys all in my next video. Peace. Skål! 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 Skål!